What is up, everyone? Kinix is here, and welcome back to Shining Song, Star Nova. And as you remember last time, our girl, our sweet, pure lamb, has returned to us. Sorry, as Guy Satsumi has seen the light, and she's gone back to her original thinking. Kinda, I mean, she's experienced a lot of shit, so she won't really be how she used to be, but she has finally saw the light as in... I don't have to follow what everyone else is doing. I could be fine just doing what I've been doing this whole time kind of deal. And now she's good again, and now she won't be a little shit anymore, I hope. She she said she said she made this revelation, but we you never know. There's still a whole part left, and we don't know if there's any other parts left to it, even though this part, part three, sounded like it was gonna be the last one, but who knows? Anyways, so yeah, basically Sasumi's technically back, and let's hope that she stays back, and let's hope that we win the Grand Prix, because... <laughs> Shit's fucky at Quasar. Don't know how they're gonna have a center since there's only four up front now instead of five, but... Anyways... The fewer caused by our dome live calmed down as the days passed. Thankfully, the public's memory proved as short as always, and business seemed to be returning to normal. I peered at Aki, who was sitting on the sofa while reading a magazine. What? Why are you staring at me for? <sighs> Could it be that you had a thing for me all this time, and you want to add me to your collection now that you've won over Sasachan? I should have known you were a Lolicon all along, producer! Wait, what are you saying? I was just thinking it's a good thing your knee's starting to get better. As if to demonstrate, Aki stood up and flexed her bad leg a bit. Looks like it. At least it doesn't hurt anywhere as much as it did before. Yeah, thankfully you're still young. Uh, it gets much harder to recover from injuries like that once you get old, you know. <laughs> Maybe instead of Oni-chan, I should start calling you Oji-san instead. Please don't say scary stuff like that. But I heard you and Sasuke-chan were a pair now. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for still believing in me. I know I screwed things up for the team this time, but I'm gonna make it up to at the Grand Prix. I swear you won't regret it. After all, I'm a Nova 2. It just can't be Sasachan holding the team up after all the time. I'm gonna show it to you. Aki-chan's full power! Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Hi, phone! Just then the phone rang. <laughs> Looks like I gotta get something. Taking- oh, I looks like- yeah, I, I got it right, for some reason I felt I said that wrong. Looks like I have something to take care of first, sorry. I picked up the call. You've reached Shining Productions, this is Nishiyama. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Music stopped. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes Pardon? What?! This has got to be a mistake! Yes, I'm headed over there right away! Thank you. I slammed down the phone and put them on my coat. Hey, that didn't sound good at all. No, I just got a call from Matarasu-san. Uh, I- no, why, why did I say Matarasu? Oh, man, I- 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 I'll fuck it up. Anyways, Ashitero-san at Soma Music. I don't know the details, but there's big trouble brewing. I've got to get over there right away. Do you need me to do anything? No, stay here. You need to be resting. Leave this one to me. I'm everyone's producer. Okay. Oh boy, what the hell's happening here? Something unbelievable had happened indeed. Sorry, I had to close my window. There's noise outside. Anyways, <laughs> I knew that our dome live wasn't as of a success as projected, but I thought things would be mostly all right. We had broken even and the trouble on social media was starting to calm down by now. Ashitera was already waiting for me at Soma Music headquarters by the time I arrived. He had always been one of our greatest supporters at Soma Music, but for him to suddenly inform me that they were backing out of Star Nova's record label idea. Ah, uh, deal. Produce, um, producer son, please take a seat. Ashitaru, is it true that Soma plans to end its contract with Shining Productions? Now, now, let's calm down. I didn't finish talking on the phone. Don't worry, I am on your side here. You see, my boss at Soma Music don't have a problem with Shining Productions at all. You've been a foreright business partner through all of this, and you against all odds made your talents into industry icons. That can only be an indicator of your skill. They just have concerns about the potential and abilities, uh, liabilities posed by the current membership of Star Nova. 
What do you mean? Ashitara opened a folder and put a file of papers related to each of the seven girls that started over on the table. Oh. He judging my girls? Um. First, we have the most obvious one, Kashiwagiaki. Despite being only 19 years old, she's suffered an injury which has already put her out of alive once. Uh, we had a huge hope for this one. For her to suffer a setback as such at an early age. We best graduate her soon, no? Think of the liabilities if her injury were to continue and get worse. But from the looks of things, she's on the mend. In just two more weeks, she should be back to normal. You never truly know if an old injury might appear, reappear. Please think of your words more carefully. Is it really right that we force a young woman to potentially become a cripple just for the sake of being an idol? Uh, uh. Shit. Put that way. Put uh, Put that way. There wasn't much I could say in response. But there were the same people who totally were fine with injecting Aki with suspicious medicine so that she would be able to perform the dome life. <laughs> it was obvious that Ashitara was trying to justify a decision which was already made by his superiors with words that sounded good on paper. Next, we have Yamamoto Maria, already six. Oh, I was about to say 62. Well, I'm about to play my girl, 26 years old. Surely her career would be better served if she graduated from being an idol and moved on to other jobs more befitting her age. Well, that really, that's really something for Maria to decide herself. Now, this Watanabe Julie. Uh, disobedience, wild card. Our team's already had to bail her out of multiple scandals. But if she were to make one more mistake, then it would really be the end. Why does he have an accent now? I don't know. Continuing on, we have Tanabe Natsuki. Her popularity was never that strong to begin with. You could say she's here thanks to the other girls, but... It sucks because it's not wrong! Oh, they play it, my girl! Natsuki's cool. I just don't know why she wasn't really that popular. I don't know, man. That That's dirty. But she effectively has no future in the idol business. Much of the saying can be said about Hashimoto Mika. No, Mika got popular. Uh, uh, she just wasn't popular on TV, but she got popular. So, that, no, I can't agree with that one. But, damn. The critics of the fans uh, pan her soul drama appearance. Well, I'm sure once she graduates, she'll be more than glad to move on to say you work. Wouldn't something like that be more suited for her? Akimoto Nemu, unfortunately, there's still quite a bit of bad rumors surrounding Akimoto-san regarding whether she's receiving preferential treatment thanks to her mother's wealth and connections. Whether it's true or not, it's still a stain on Starnova's image. And finally, Starnova sent to Shimazaki Sasumi. Recently learned she has been in contact with Golden Calf Productions. Wait a second here, she's already told me about this. She, she has no plan of leaving Shining Productions and signing with, on with Golden Calf. How can you be so sure this is an unpredictable industry, you know? Well, I understand that Shimazaki-san is the crown jewel of Star Nova, but what is Shimazaki-san alone going to do? Producer-san, I know it's hard to base reality here, but these talents were long shots to begin with. If we continue on this path, our Nova success will continue to be sabotaged by its mis members. I understand completely that this is not your fault, though. Shining Productions was in dire straits until recently, wasn't it? There were just the best talents you could find during those dark times, weren't they? Where are you going with this? I am proposing a way to save Star Nova. Image everything we have now. Ima or what did he say? Imagine, my bad. I don't know why I said image. Expect, uh, except with a fresh set of new young faces. Aw, oh, shit. He's getting told that thing that his old producer said. Fresh new faces, all that bull crap. Pardon me for putting it so harshly, but it is in fact that the current members of Star Novas were merely bottom rung. But your talents, imagine just how much more popular Star Nova will be in the seven best talents that Soma Music has to offer. New members? Indeed, that is what I'm offering. Ashitara opened up a folder and put seven new files over the ones of the girls. The newest hottest thing in the market right now. School idols, everyone's talking about them. Ah, men and women across the nation really love school idols right now. And these girls are the very best of the best. They're the winners of last year's school idol prix. 
Now that they'll graduate from high school soon, they're looking to sign on as pro idols with solo music. I present to you Star Nova Second Generation, producer son. With these young girls, you will be invincible. Forget the success you're seeing right now, because once these girls are our new Novas, your profits can easily double. And of course, you can have these girls with no strings attached. I want to see Star Nova and Shining Productions become big too, you know. That's why I'm your ally. Yeah. <laughs> I stood in shock. And... But a heartbeat, my seven Shining Girls had been replaced. I looked down at the photographs of the new talents that Ashteru was offering me. Certainly they were beautiful and filled with dreams, talent, and motivation. You could say that they were better than the seven girls of Star Nova. In fact, they really did seem amazing, having already become successful idols despite still being high schoolers. If you were to decline, however, we are going to form a new unit composed of these girls. They would then become your rivals, and my superiors want these girls to receive headline treatment from now. Star Nova will be abandoned by Soma Music. The support of Star Nova depends on this, producer Song. Please make the right decision. Don't tell me I'm gonna have to make a decision at all again so soon! I mean, of course I'm gonna save my girls, but we gotta see what that bad end looked like! But anyways... I picked up the foul for one of the girls. So this was the center of their school idol unit. She looks like a younger, more vibrant version. Can we see? I wish they had art of them. I, I want to see that then. Ugh, she looked like a younger, more vibrant version of Sasami. As if fate itself was mocking me, tempting me to abandon my love for this new young face. Oh, I was sure that this girl had always been the main heroine of her story. All this time, her story had been unfolding, unknown to me. But it had been a grand story of seven girls who had come together to form an idol unit. They had struggled, they had cried, they had laughed, and in the end, they somehow became, become victorious against impossible odds. If I entered the scenes as her new producer in a chapter of her life, then just imagine how great an idol producer I could become. But to just throw away everyone just because of one bad life it was too cruel. There's no way I could do that. Not after everything I had said to Sasami. But without some of music's support, I realized that this was not so much a decision, but an order. Either replace the girls or disappear. Why did everything have to come down to this? Oh shit. I stumbled out of Soma Music HQ in a daze. I sat down in a fountain in front of the towering skyscraper, my back hunched. In just a heartbeat, everything had been taken away. I looked over the overcast sky as rain began to fall. This kind of ending was expected for an idol group, wasn't it? <clears throat> Starting small, armed with nothing but big dreams for the future. Catching lucky breaks, getting increasingly popular as days went on. Eventually the days became weeks, and weeks became months, and months became years. Then, the trouble gradually began. Girls became disillusioned. Injuries happened. People lost interest. All the while this was happening, another beautiful story was unfolding behind your back. A field of new flowers blossomed. To these new flowers, they had been the main girls all along. The girls who had came before them were their rivals, adversaries who were to be overcome. Who had to be, my bad. They never saw how these or those who came to before them had suffered. Eventually, they overcame the previous generation in a bright, shining moment. Until the day, a new group of radiant new faces rose to the challenge. To challenge them. And this cycle repeated forever. All the while making money for people like me. Was this wrong? Was I supposed to fight it? But this was society. This had been the system humanity had accepted as the best way of generating value. What could this single idol producer do against the system itself? It's raining. Oh! Oh, Packer Coon, you're back! What? What, my boy? How? How'd you find me? Uh, what? Bah! What? I did a double take when I saw an alpaca standing beside me. Yeah, wait, alpaca couldn't? How did you get there? Bah. The creature hung its head in defeat as it, pound, as it was pounded by the rain. I see. You've been struggling all this time too, huh? You know, I didn't really want to do this. 
I don't want to sell everyone out. I don't want to be the traitor who crushed everyone's dreams. Everyone was counting on me. I wanted to do my best to make the girls star into star idols. But you know, the world really isn't that simple. It's not like the animes you watch on television. It's not like the storybooks or your mother used to read to you. It's not like the textbooks you studied at school. You can do your best every day, follow the directions, make all the right decisions, and still end up the number one loser. You can be the vilest bully in the world. You can lie. You can do everything wrong. Break all the rules. Make every mistake there is to make and still end up winning everything. Love, money, fame, women, men, power, everything. There's nothing you can do about it. Pulling out a nice song and dance number won't magically solve anything. It's just the way things are. It's what we grown-ups want to shield children from. So don't blame me for this. I didn't want things to turn out like this either. It's not my fault. I suppose you don't care about all that. It must have been tough trying to become an idol all this time. You did your best. And that's all that matters in the end. I stood and picked up the alpaca service. Come on, let's get you back home. You'll be humming along with the rest of your herd in no time. Far away from us. No. <laughs> with that, the two of us walked away, our backs fading into the rain. Sasumi stood under the writer statue with her um Oh god, here comes umbrella in hand. It's really coming down hard, huh? I wonder why Shiro called me out here now of all times. I've already decided I'm not going to join Quasar after all. She turned around when she heard Shiro behind her. Oh boy. Sasumi-chan. Shiro-san, you said you had something you want to talk to me about? That is so, Sasumi-chan. I want you to listen to what I'm about to tell you and think about it seriously before giving me a response. Okay. I know all the things people say about me. That I'm a black fallen idol who slept her way to the top and betrayed all her friends. Maybe by now I've become that kind of idol. But listen to me. Everything I did was for the sake of Quasar. You know what it's like, don't you? When you're an idol and you have all sorts of expectations to live up to and images to maintain. You think Okuda Shiro could have uh, could continue to exist if I showed weakness? If people realized that I had fears and anxieties just like them? Then what would happen? What would happen to Quasar? I wanted to tell everyone my true feelings too, you know. I wanted to tell them that I'm not who they think I am. But you know, that's not our job. That's not what people want from us. The lie became the truth, and the truth became the lie. If I told them the truth of everything that's happened until now, it'd be the very people who would call me a liar. Look, isn't that mad? That I can talk about my own life, my own beliefs, but be called a liar? As if other people know me better than I know myself. What kind of nonsense is that? You're the only person who understands how I feel, Sasumi-chan. I don't want us to be enemies. Sasumi-chan, come join me in Quasar. And one day, you will replace me. Just as I replaced Kanahana, you will overthrow me. It's beautiful, isn't it? The story of Okuda Shiro's fall. I'm sorry. He's already abandoned you, you know. Summer Music decided to graduate all the members of Star Nova anyways. By next year, there'll be fresh new set of faces on the unit. Ah, that can't be true! I'm sorry, but I'm not lying. Quasar will always have a spot for you, no matter what happens. Shiro-san? Go, find out the truth for yourself, and give me your answer. Uh, okay. Oh boy. SHIT! Ah! The other girls were already gathered at the office by the time Sasumi arrived. Everyone! From the dire looks of the other girls' faces, she already knew that something terrible must have happened. Is it true that we're all being graduated from the unit? I stood from my desk, my head hung in defeat. 
This solo music has some concerns about the unit. They're offering seven new girls to replace you guys on Star Nova. Otherwise, they'll form a new unit with those girls and abandon Star Nova. No way! So, the worst has ha finally happened, huh? What are we gonna do? Is this really the end? Fuck, I should have known those uh, suits at Selma Music would backstab us. Everyone, I'm still doing everything I can to keep you guys as the members of the unit. At least, until the end of this year. But, with the way things are, I can't make any promises. I'm really sorry. I bowed my f uh, I bowed, my fist trembling with fury. This was just like when... Of course, Shining Productions will offer each of you generous severances packages. If you still choose to remain Shining Production talents, I'll personally make sure that all of you get employment in the entertainment business. Remember, being an idol is only one chapter of a talent's life. You all still have Shining careers ahead of you. Please give your future deep thought and accept this graceful exit. As I spoke those words, the words of my old producer echoed in my head. All of you guys will be getting good severance packages. <laughs> Yay, don't say I never did anything for you. Uh, that's not what we're worried about at all here. This doesn't make any sense at all, you know? How can the lab Labrador continue to exist when all the members are different? The fans aren't going to accept this at all! There's no way this is going to end up going well! Ah, uh, don't worry. Don't worry. The suits upstairs already have it all figured out. Besides, who really gives a damn about that? Look, Karukun, or Chan, this is a shit industry. I know it's hard to accept, but the fans will be totally chill with the new members. Ah, uh, girls nowadays, they just want to have a sequel at the next big thing, you know? Squeal, my bad. <gasps> just enjoy, enjoy! You worked hard, you did your best, and left with a severance! In the end, I was no different from him. There was nothing I can do about the situation except muttering, keep muttering to everyone that this was a shit industry, that this was the natural outcome. There was nothing any of us could do about it. Maria was the first to catch on to my feelings. She wiped the pain from her face and put her hand on my back. <sighs> what are you doing, producer? I already saw this coming ages ago. No matter how you look at it, there's no way an old dinosaur like me can keep pretending to be an idol. Don't worry, I don't resent you or anything at all. You're just doing what's best for Shining Productions. To tell the truth, my goal was always Tokyo Dome. Now that I pulled it off, there's no more reason for me to be an idol anymore. Maria? Aki stumbled over to where I was still bowing. Suddenly I felt two hands on my shoulders, struggling to stand me back up. What are you doing, you big idiot? There's no reason for you to be bowing at all! All this was because of me, wasn't it? It's because I ruined our dome life. If anything, it's me who everyone should hate. After everything I said, it was me who ruined everything! Aki, oh, no, no, guys, my girl. <laughs> hey, me! I'm just a shit lolly after all! But there's no reason for a producer to take the blame! After all, producers... Producers! Maria wrapped her arms around Aki and held her back. Aki, there's no point in blaming anyone and getting angry anymore. You worked the hardest out of everyone here. I don't want you to hurt yourself anymore. There's no need to risk your life to become an idol. I'm sure you still have a bright future ahead of you. If you permanently damage your leg now, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. But... Indeed, perhaps it'd be best if Nemanima took a step back as well. Being a relative of one of the board members of Shining Productions has caused quite a number of rumors to swirl. Uh, I guess lately I've been thinking of becoming fashion model. As expected, being an idol doesn't really suit my image. Why is everyone already talking like we've been defeated? Didn't we all promise to do our best? Is this really the ending we want? There's still things we have left to accomplish, you know? This isn't an anime, you know. Besides, we're... Weren't you thinking of focusing on becoming a seiyuu too? This is the perfect opportunity for you to get into that. Well... It's kind of a late confession, but Natan got into this whole idol business for a whole bunch of selfish reasons. I didn't appreciate the difficulties of being an idol at all, and just blew everything off as just fun little adventure. 
Maybe this is just Natan's just desserts for looking down on idols. But we still managed to get bigger than anything I could have dreamed of, and I've already made enough money to pay off most of my parents' debt, so if it ain't if I ain't a member of Star Nova, it's not like I can complain. Why is everyone giving up? This wasn't supposed to be how Star Nova ended at all! Are these kinds of things supposed to end with big, shining lives when we sing and dance our hearts out? Weren't we all supposed to be smiling? Why is everyone just giving up so easily? Sasachan, sorry, but I've been doing this for over a decade now. I'm a little tired. You gotta know when to quit. Honestly, there's no reason to be ashamed at all. We all did well. We all blew away everyone's expectations. You were amazing. Besides, you're the only one here with an offer, aren't you? You can still be an idol, even though we all didn't have what it takes. Maybe you have what it takes to be number one. Go out there and be a star. No! But why are you saying this? There's no way I can be a Quasar! They are rivals! And after they did all those things to you! Sasachan, don't try to be a good guy all the time. You won't get very far that way. Shit. How could all this be happening under my watch? I didn't want to watch my girls cry. This wasn't the kind of producer I wanted to be. No, no, this is... Sasmi backed away. Sasachan, I'm sorry, but... No! Sasmi covered her face in horror and ran out of the office. Ah! Uh, Sasachan! Sasachan! We all stood in stunned silence as Sasmi slammed the door shut on us. But there wasn't anything more we could say. What was this messed up situation? Yeah, um, kinda had a feeling this would turn shit very fast, but, uh, ooh, didn't think it'd be that fast, didn't think it would be like this, ooh, 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 I'm hurting again. Uh, <laughs> a few days later, I sat in Soma Music Office meeting my new school idols. Do we actually get pictures? After the general interview, we performed the physical examination where Ashiteru and myself looked at the girls in their bathing suits. As promised, these girls were perfect. There was no way to fault them. It was only natural that they were the best of the best, and so young too. Even younger than Aki. Yet a fire burned in each of their eyes. They were in this to win. They were planning on acting like pro idols from day one. There would be no fooling around, no doubts, no hesitation. Girls like them had seemed untouchable prior to me entering the room. I never imagined that one day I would have talents this amazing applying to work for me. I was supposed to be happy about this. I had finally made it to the big leagues. My fortunes were only going to get better from here on out. But all I felt was a great big void. Come to think of it, didn't I do something like this a long time ago? The girls had all dressed up in swimsuits and stood in front of me. At the time, none of them seemed perfect. They had doubts. They were all on the verge of being forced to leave the business after all. There was absolutely no sign of indicating we would ever become successful. It all seemed so long ago now. It seemed like I had lived so many lifetimes since then. And yet, it had been just the beginning of last year. We grew closer, we laughed, we cried, we struggled to make the most out of the odd cards life had dealt us. Looking back, we were so young and foolish, heading into this complicated business with not a clue as to what was going to happen. Sure, we had our troubles back then. We were poor. Every day, we were thinking of whether we would have enough money to buy enough food for ourselves. After paying just our, our rent, our entire paychecks just vanished to the winds. But for some reason, my memory of those times seemed so much more colorful. Now we were all rich. We had more uh, we had yeah, more money than we knew what to do with. But where had it all the hope gone? All the that color. Come to think of it, when was the last time I even left my office? When was the last time I had fun? The memory of Sasami's kiss rushed back to me, nearly rupturing a vein in my throat. I see. That was the happiest memory I had, even during these gray times. And yet, I had let her down. Aika. Pardon me? A voice interrupted my thoughts. 
<clears throat> Ikeson, was it? I looked down onto my file. Yes, this girl was the center of their old uh, school idol unit. In other words, she was going to be the front runner of Star Nova's second generation. Is something the matter, Nishiyama san? Was there something in the examination which concerned you? Uh, no, no, I was merely lost in thought. You did marvelously. You're truly the very image of a pro idol. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. You're too kind. Look down on this kid. She was hardly 18 years old, and yet she was entering this dirty adult world. Maybe it'd be better to shoo her away. A pure, innocent girl like her seemed unsuited for what was to follow. She really did look like a younger version of Sasame. That's why I wish we had an illustration so it could impact me more. <laughs> but I knew nobody in the world could replace her. Sasumi was after all. I'm sorry, but pardon me. Producer san? I left the room, my brain tumbling in my head. What was I doing? What a farce all this was. I looked up at the evening sky. I had promised to Sasumi that I would protect her, hadn't I? And yet, what was I doing here, looking at her replacement so easily? Was I really this weak of a producer? This weak of a man? In the end, I was but a clone of my old producer. I wanted to do better than this, damn it! I envisioned all the girls in a big, happy life at the e very end! Maybe I was naive, but I really believed it! Maria, Haki, Nemu, Mika, Julie, Natan, and Sasami. All together, they would be stars bright enough to turn night into day. Reborn! Then what the fuck was I doing here? Didn't I have somewhere to be? I tore off my tie in a blind rage. Fuck! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't like this. Oh no, I don't like this. No, I don't like this. I don't like this. No, I don't like this. <laughs> Sasumi stood in front of Shiro in front of a mirror. That... I think... I, I don't know, that just came out weird. I, I think it would have been fine if Sasumi stood with Shiro in front of a mirror. But hey, yeah, in Quasar's uniform. See, you're beautiful in a Quasar uniform, Sasumi-chan. Almost as if you were always meant to be one of us. No need for such a long face. This is the best possible outcome. You worked hard, you got popular enough to be accepted into Quasar, and straight into the front row, no less. Few other girls have been so fortunate. Now the two of us, together, will dominate the idol industry. Here at Quasar, we can give you all the resources you need to make it to the top. It's nice. I admit, if you follow the rules, you can do whatever you want. Once you're a Quasar, you'll really... Or you're really above normal humans anyways. Ah, but first, I suppose you need this. She'll pull out a choker from which a red gemstone hung. She slopped it around Slossimi's neck and attached the ends to the back. Now your look is complete. Slossimi felt Shiro place her arms around her waist. This gemstone once belonged to someone important to me, but now I want you to have it. It'll be a good luck charm of sorts. Go out there and do well, and one day, surpass even I. Do you believe this will atone you? I don't know. Or am I just one of your playthings? Am I merely her replacement? I told you it's not like that! You're my beloved Sasumi-chan! Nobody could be more important to me! I see. Sasumi pulled away from Shiro. I'm sorry, but it really is too much to accept that an important gift, such an important gift, both the gemstone and the uniform. Besides, I only came here today to try it on. It's not like I'm really a quasar or anything yet. Okay, good. Uh, I'm about to say, I mean, if she's a quasar, then we're kind of fucked, because we can't just take her back. That's not how it works, I think. But, uh... Until the final decision's been made, please hold off on saying such important things. I see. So you're still not... But one day, I'll convince you, Sasumi-chan. I'll convince you that your rightful place is by my side. Then I suppose that'll do for today. Sasumi walked out of the change room and into Quasar's dance studio. What am I doing coming here? And even trying on a Quasar uniform at Shiro-san's suggestion? 
She looked out the window. Maybe Medusa-san was somewhere out there trying to come up with the last second plan to save the day. Oh yeah, I am. Ah, or I, I, That or I'm just coming for you, one of the two. Ah, Sasami tightened her fist. Maybe there was still hope. Against impossible odds, maybe Star Nova could once again score a comeback. I mean, is there any other music industry besides Sova, or is Sova just the biggest and the best and that's it? Because if there is, then more than likely we can side with someone else, surely, right? <sighs> she wanted to believe. I wandered through the streets, surrounded by neon lights of skyscrapers around me. Sasami, she was still out there. She was counting on me. So music, Golden Cap, Quasar, could I really give up against, uh, give up against them? Somewhere out there, there was still a glimmer of hope. I was sure of it. Maybe the system won in the end because people accepted it. We lowered our heads and let it win. We justified our own weaknesses by saying we had no other choice. But we were really trying to avoid trouble. We were taking the easy way out. I'm not gonna take the easy way. Sasuke-chan! Producer-san. I said it. I said it, didn't I? I'd be the guy camped out three days in advance of your handshake event, so I'd be the first person to meet you. Then what am I doing here? Just giving up like this? I said I was going to Sasuke's number one, like... Yeah, I said I was going to Sasuke's number one fan. Going to be, you mean? Ah, I couldn't give up like this! I spun around and marched back to the office. Like I was gonna accept this. There's no way I was gonna let those bastards replace my girls. But I received a phone call. A no number. What, did, what was this? Hello, this is Nishiyama. What? Uh-oh. The door burst open. The entire membership of Quasar flowed into the dance studio. Huh? Ladies, what brings you here? Like this? Uh, oh, uh, what? Uh, uh, oh, um, who did I get a call from? Ooh, who, who, who on the team is a snitch? Cause I, I'm assuming it was one of them that messaged me. But what? Well, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. Haruka Senpai told us to all to come here. She says she has an important announcement. Have received the same message. Okay, so Stella, you're good. Have ah, received the same message from Haruka-san as well. As for what this special announcement is, strange. I do not recall there being anything on the agenda. Um, Shiro-san, I really should be going now. Before Sasuke could leave, Haruka entered the room and shut the door behind her. I don't like this. So everyone's here, huh? What's the meaning of this? You see, there's something important I've got to tell you all. But first... <laughs> yep! Ah, uh, um... Mmm, so good! Ah, uh, so spicy game! Yes, I knew he would appear! Ah, uh, my heart jumped when I got Unknown Caller and then, like, this woman was doing something, I was like... You know what to be the cherry on top? Oda's doing some shit too. And look at who we got here. Oh, even if I don't speak my mind, the worst comes to fruition. Oh my god. Oda stepped out from behind how to die. Wouldn't he be taller than her? Anyways, good evening, my pretty flowers. The girls murmured in worry at the foul- Wait, is he the lead of Quasar again? Or, cause like, he said he was when Sasuke switched over, so I am assuming that maybe that was going to happen regardless, so he is the lead of Quasar now too? And maybe the person who messaged me was Kamijo, he's like, listen, you gotta fuck up Quasar, because that old pervert's leading it now, or something like that, I don't know. Anyways, the girls murmured in worry at the foul man's appearance. What was this lecher doing here? And where was K Kami P? Uh, Uncle Oda, please tell the girls what has happened and how we'll be doing things from now. Yep, he's the lead now. Harker practically wrapped herself around the old man, rubbing her chest against him. Yes, yes, my sweet. You see, there's been a little change in management here at Golden Cap. As of now, I will be the executive producer of Quasar. Yeah, I thought so. <gasps> Um, Kami P is a little preoccupied right now, you see. I'm afraid his poor father's health has taken a turn for the worse. 
He is being taken to the hospital right now. Oh, how tragic. How tragic indeed for a son to, to witness his father's death. My heart aches. So you intend to take advantage of the Fuhrer uh, to take control of the company? Well... Nah, I think he can only do it. He, he, he's the only one who can get that disturbed laugh perfectly. Where is he? <laughs> that wasn't really his... No, I can do better than that. G give me a second. Because <laughs> he, he starts with the... <laughs> <laughs> Haruka, my sweet, you will see to taking care of this contraption, no? How embarrassing it would be for the young master if his pride and joy were to be found broken. After all that money and time devoted to making his little pet project a reality. Haruka handed her lackey... Oh, yeah. Haruka and her lackeys pulled out... Y'all really ain't gonna do this, are you? Cause, um... Y'all ready to see me cry over a robot? Um, ooh! Uh... Hark and her lackeys pulling out bats from their bags! Ooh! Sorry, Spellachan, but orders are orders. Wait, why the hell am I even apologizing to a robot for? <laughs> Let's turn her to scrap, girls. No, no, all y'all should be shut the fuck up. I don't like that you just talked out of nowhere. How dare you take Haruka-sama's rank? There's no way a robot's gonna take away our hard work. No shit, losing a fucking robot? Let's fuck this bitch up. My god. Um, as for you, Shirar Empress, magnificent work. Our plan worked out perfectly. What? Just as I ordered, you have brought the center of Star Nova to me. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. Although I suppose she's not the center of Star Nova anymore, no. No, no, no. She is the Quasar's newest member. N no! Shira san, is this true? I. She'll choked on her words. No, this is... Is the reality. This is the true face of the greatest idol in the nation. She has lied, she has deceived, and she has plotted. All in the name of becoming who she is now. Empress unchallenged. And an idol beloved by all. A goddess ascendant. <laughs> How unfortunate. How unfortunate it is that you have been used, my Sasami-chan. All this time she has been plotting your death. Now, I hope you mean career. <gasps> she brought you here into my arms. Come forth onto I, your new master, and beg me for a chance in the spotlight. Cry and kiss at my feet for your chance to become the public's new darling, like all who have come before you. No! I'm never going to be a Quasar! I'll never accept a man like you as my producer! Oh, really? Looks like you'll be needing some persuasion then. Two girls emerged from the shadows behind Sasmi and grabbed her by her hair. That mean... My throat kind of hurt, so, uh, you wanna... Yeah! That wasn't as much as I thought. You guys are really killing my expectations here. <laughs> yeah! I guess I, I, I didn't really do any better, but, yo, it's allergy season. My throat been itching like a bitch. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't move if I were you. Two girls pulled out scissors from their tracksuit and snipped them in front of Sasumi's face. While she was distracted, they bound her wrist behind her with rope. This is turning into some real fuckery, isn't it? Uh, it'd be a shame if we accidentally sliced off the tip of your nose after all. <laughs> it's that time, girl. You know what's coming. Your physical examination! <laughs> 
Take her and Shiro up way upstairs. We'll deal with the android here. Arcus two lackeys pushed Sasumi away as Oda and Shiro walked into the elevator. Help! Producer, son! It's too late. Your producer has no idea what's going on. No, somebody snitched on you. I don't know who, but probably Kana. If so, how did she know? But Kana, if you did, thanks. I don't know who snitched, but somebody snitched. I'm pretty sure somebody snitched. Uh, he cannot save you now. Now come along with you, with your traitor, Shiro. The three of us have so much to discuss regarding your future. I'm tasteless. I want no part of this. Mako shook her head and turned to leave the room. Me too! This is crazy! However, Haruka grabbed onto Kaori's hair. Uh, no, you're not going anywhere, Kaorichi. Hey, you sure lost a shitfuck of ranks last election, haven't you? Did you honestly think you had what it takes to be, took one, to be one of us? No, of course not! Haruka... Haruka's bitches descended upon... <laughs> Haruka's bitches descended upon Kaori like a horde of vultures. She thought she was so beautiful and making it into the front row. Don't get so full of yourself, bitch. It was just a one-time fluke. You thought you'd be Haruka-sama, didn't you? You wanted to be a sensei, didn't you? Huh? Wanna stay on the team? We need to educate her. Teach her what it really takes to become an idol. <laughs> Let's make her suffer a bit then. No, no! Ah! Oh god, and the girls pulled out scissors and approached Kaori like wolves hunting down prey. No! Stop! Stop! Kaori fell down on her back, her face and arms. <sighs> she was assaulted from every direction by cold steel. <laughs> Let's see just how pretty she is on the outside. Now I hope you mean clothes, because. You really got to choice your wording here, because it makes it seem like you're murdering people here. Stop! Oh my god, my voice. <laughs> Hair and clothing. Oh, they do my girl dirty. Hair and clothing fell apart as the bitches sliced Kaori with the scissors. Oh my god, Stella, no. She looks so defeated. My girl. Why you gotta do my girl like that? Stella, don't bother nobody! <laughs> Fuck, that's... Mm. Next to... Uh, why, why is Haruka slab sl squatting? Anyways, uh, next to them, Haruka slammed her bat down on Stella's body, causing her to crumple through the floor. Warning, structural integrity compromise. This unit is property of Golden Cap Productions. Damage will lead to severe personal and criminal liability. Cease action or... Huh? What the fuck is she even... Uh, what the fuck is it even saying? How boring. It's just like smashing apart her laptop or something. It would be so much better if this thing could scream like Kari-chan. How could grab a small laptop from the floor? Why was there just a small laptop on the floor? Yeah, what? Anyways, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I swiped this from Kami B's office earlier. This is what controls the machine. All I have to do is adjust some of the settings and... Oh no, Stella. Jesus Christ, you guys are fucked up. Jesus Christ. It, it hurts. It hurts my back. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm still kind of giving her eye gifts list because I don't know really how to... Uh, I don't know. Uh, there we go. That's more like it, isn't it? <laughs> so, so I respect so that She truly she knows everything. Hey, you suppose the robot that has that everything that. under its clothes? Oh, 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 Torn of bats and scissors fell upon Stella as the girls tore her apart. Uh, please stop! It hurts! Uh, uh, no! Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I hate these people so much. I ran through the crowd streets to Golden Cab Building. No. Was I going to make it in time? From what Kamijo- Yeah, Kamijo snitch. Good. Uh, from what Kamijo told me earlier, it sounded like something incredibly bad was taking place at the office right now. And Sasumi was caught right in the middle of it. I had to make it there in time to save Sasumi or else... Finally, the Golden Cab building appeared in view. I crashed into the lobby and was stopped by a secretary. Um, excuse me, you can't...
be here. Please, you cannot be here right now. I need to get upstairs now! Dear guests, you're violating the rules, please. I shoved my way past the woman and pounded the buttons to summon the elevator. Stop! Security! <laughs> Suddenly, a squad of security guards burst through the hidden door and charged at me. Wait, this is an emergency! Stop! But it was too late. I received an elbow to the face as I was knocked to the ground by half a dozen men, twice my strength. You're all making a mistake! You're all gonna be fired! Unhand me! Instead, I felt my wrist get handcuffed as they shoved me, uh, my face into the marble floor. No! No! Ah! Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Hugga's lackeys held Stella down as they tore her clothes from her body. Uh, no! Holy shit! Uh, it really does have everything down here. <laughs> Holy shit! I can't believe the sick twist in mind that build thing has. The build thing has what? Uh, no, no! I mean, it doesn't look like anything. I, I mean, YouTube, can I show this? This is like an animatonic doll, pretty much. I, they're not in showing. The bitch just held Stella down and she tried to cover herself. Oh, I wonder. Just how far can this thing. Can we please not? Karichi, come over here. No, please let me go. I'll do anything. Oh, you'll do anything. Uh, Haruka uh, shoved Kairi down on top of Stella. Why don't you show off how cute you are, Kairichi? Give us a nice big peace sign for the camera. Oh. Well, from the looks of it, her hair don't look too horrid, so they didn't fuck it up too bad. But I thought they were shaving her bald. Well, anyways, um, a hundred hands reached down and tore the rest of Kairichi- Uh, I was gonna call Kairichi. Kairi's clothes in underwear. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Girls put out their cameras and snap photographs of Kauri and stripe and strip bare naked. No, please, no, don't! I was gonna say don't, but it was still no. Um, if you don't do exactly as I say from now, then I'm gonna fuck up your whole life, you know. Jesus Christ, that face, I didn't even notice. Imagine what your mommy and daddy will think if you, uh, what of you when it comes out that you fucked a robot. Wow, <laughs> what a line, you actual cunt. <laughs> My God. Is this really what we're getting into now? Is this really what we're getting into now? Is this really? Hey, Karichi, you're gonna cry for mommy and daddy some more, are you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll do anything, just delete those photos. That's the spirit. Now kiss the fucking robot, do it! <laughs> what a fucking threat. What the shit is this? <laughs> it's not funny, but I'm... What the fuck is happening? Why? Okay, okay! Harry leaned forward and pressed her lips against Stella's. What the fuck is that limp ass kiss? Do it like you wanna fuck her! Okay! I'll do it, so please don't share the photos! <laughs> See, now we're getting into territory that I'm not even. What? Ooh, ah, uh, wait a minute. Uh, okay, ah, uh, what? Ooh, ooh, what is this? Stop! This is getting so bad! Uh, <laughs> our puss is getting wet, isn't it? It is, it is! Let's be good sisters and let her get off! We're teammates after all, aren't we? <laughs> I have this. What the fuck? You really are fucking Lesbo. Why the fuck you have this? <laughs> what? What is happening? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, I didn't even see. Oh, ma. Oh, ma. Are we actually gonna see this? Are they gonna actually CG this? Are they gonna actually see this? I can't. My brain is actually. My brain is actually melting and not from the heat. This is just fucking mad, man. Oh my god. These bitches are fucking mad. <laughs> Haruka snatched the double-sided dildo from her subordinate's hand. Yeah, that mm, it's there. It oh my god, it's there. She I I have to I have to blur that, I'm pretty sure. That is a double-sided wing. Whoa! 
Ooh. Um. All right. Um. I don't know what to say, guys. This is this is the most. <laughs> oh, Kari Chan or Kari Chan, Kari Chan! It's time for your porn shoot. No, anything but that. No. Too bad. Looks like I'll be releasing all those photos. That... I mean, I mean, who's to say she won't take photos of this? I mean, Kari, please think logically. No, no, no. Okay, we don't get the seat. Oh, the, uh, the, the, no, I'd rather see the double-sided. Please go back. Please go back. I don't want to see this. I know Shiro's probably going to have some change of heart and walk him upside the head or side, I hope. But, oh, no, I don't want to see this. I, anything but this. No. Owner Shub sauce me face down. On, that's not face down. Face down on the sofa. No, stop. What a feisty one you are, but do you have any idea who I am? I take what I want, when I want, how I want, for whatever reason I want. <laughs> yeah, we have to capture this beautiful moment, as this is probably the worst CG to come out of this whole game. Um, Oda grappled, uh, grabbed on top of Sasumi's dress and began to pull it off. Uh, I mean, I can't really get that. Sasumi, I think you're gonna have to do us one and actually give us some... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have done it any better. That that sounded like fear. And my voice and my throat is too fucked to give that fear. <laughs> Cheryl stood still as a statue. A foolish girl you are. You're best win my favor now. Because your fate belongs in my hands. Mine! I'm the master of everything! No, Shiro side of help! Oh, why call it the name of the one who sold you out? I'm sad to break this to you, but you see, this is just the kind of person Shiro is. Isn't that right, Shiro? Wasn't this all part of your brilliant scheme to destroy your rival? Didn't, uh, did not everything execute exactly as you dreamed? With this, you will not be... Uh, not be the greatest celebrity in the nation? Will you not be the grand invincible victor, winner by default, the face of all that is desirable in the world? Come on, laugh along with me, gloat. Announce to the world how brilliant you were. I... Oh, pardon, but maybe that's not what you want here after all. This was supposed to be Shiro's kill, wasn't it? Then why not feast on your prey here and now when she is vulnerable? After all, this old man enjoys watching two angels perform just as much as he likes being a part of the action. <laughs> you guys ever see that? I mean, you have to, but you ever see that Jerry meme? That is my face right now, just like, what the fuck? What? Ooh, um, um. Shiro, I know you're not like that! You're not like that! You're not like that! You're not like that at all! No. What happened to our love? What happened to when we exchanged our chokers? Didn't you say we would be together forever? What happened? Unfortunately, Kana, I have bad news. Those were all lies. What? From the moment I met you, I hated you. I had worked my whole life, gave up my girlhood, sacrificed so much, just to finally get to the front row now. And then you came out of nowhere, a mere trainee, and shot to the top, as if all of us were just jokes. From the point on, from that point on, I've waited, I've plotted, I've schemed. Everything was for the sake of this moment. No, Shiro! Kana crumbled to the floor, her arms still wrapped around Shiro's leg. Those are all lies. I know all this time you've loved me. I know! Silence! Everything I ever told you was a lie. I knew the only way to finally defeat you was to win your trust. And how beautifully everything turned out. For her, for here, you lie. Too smitten to even strike me as I reveal my machinations. I did not sacrifice so much to merely be second in command forever, for I've known from the moment I set foot in this building that my destiny was to be the greatest empress Quasar has ever known! 
No. Tears streamed down Shiro's cheeks. Not again! Oh? So a dec- uh, declina- declination. And even more I have to enjoy. Yeah! <laughs> Shiro stood in horror as the sound of Sasumi's dress ripping shrieked in her ears. Sasumi, I think you need to just stay on for this while. I, as much as I want to give you the voice you need, I can't. My throat is fucked. <laughs> I can't high pitch scream. <laughs> Doing Oda hurts. <laughs> but beside the sofa was a staff bearing Quasar's flag. She had practiced with it so much. No! I mean, that, that don't show nothing, so I think that's fine. <laughs> I know you're lying! Now that one! <laughs> I know you're lying! But everyone's sick! I know you're crying inside too! Shiro- That definitely! <laughs> yeah? She'll grab the staff in her hand. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I knew Shiro was gonna- probably come to and whack this motherfucker because the angle that they had set up here it was perfect angle for her to whack I mean he deserves it but Shiro you might go to jail if you kill him ah, ah my girl you doing a justice right now but Jesus don't kill him just just get him off her with a mighty swing she brought it down the crook villain's head ah! Not again! Not to Sasami! You! Oda spun around, blood dripping down his face, and lunged for Shiro. How dare you! The smash swung quicker than lightning and pressed the old man's gut to his spine. <laughs> he fell to his knees and collapsed on the floor. <laughs> well, that's a bit too much in my ear, Sasami. Now you can stop. <laughs> Shiro rushed over to tend to Sasami. Sasumi, are you all right? Yes. Come on, let's get you out of here. We have to. He's up again. <laughs> yeah, like I said, th 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 this man crazy. When you crazy, shit like that ain't enough. You gotta cripple him. Break his fucking knees. Uh, Sasumi's face froze in terror when Oda appeared behind Shiro. Still not knocked out, yeah? You. 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 Fueled by pure rage, the man latched on to Sasumi before she could face him. How dare you! Do you know who I am? His veiny eyes bulging from his face in a mad frenzy and blood staining his mug and teeth crimson. With uh, the man tumbled on top of Shiro with the look of a demonic spawn born from the depths of hell. You know, I'm imagining it right now and if it happens, your boy was right. But you, you remember a certain scene that with a punch, yeah, I think that might be coming up soon. Uh, I just have the feeling like the angle and then all of a sudden whack and get punched. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> he held her down and wrapped his hands around Shiro's throat. <laughs> Die! Oh my god, and back to this. Haruka grabbed Kari by the hair and waved the dildo in front of her. Kari-chan, I'm gonna make you feel real good. Cause you're gonna be the first human to fuck a robot! <laughs> what a record that'll be! You're gonna be famous! No, please, let me go, Haruka-senpai, please! <laughs> Not until you're fucking bored, show. <laughs> Holy shit, Haruka-sama's really... Hey, isn't this going a little too far? What if she fucking kills herself afterwards? Wouldn't that be kind of bad? Ah, the fuck did you say, you cunt? Nothing, Haruka-sama! Good, because if you fuck your chicken out now, you're all going to be taking turns fucking the robot. What did you say, There's more of you than there are of her. Why are you listening? Uh, now, Kari-chan, let's get started. Help! With a boom, someone kicked open the door. The gnawing white light turned back on. What? What happened? Thank you. Kamijo came in. See? Kamijo came in with the clutch, and now I'm about to come in the clutch upstairs. You see? This this was gonna happen. I knew it. I knew it. I, I, I can tell. I've played this game long enough to tell what's coming. You fools! What are you doing? Ah, uh, 
Haku looked on in disbelief as security staff rushed into the room and apprehended her lackeys. When? How? Before she knew it, a security guard had knocked her down to the ground and handcuffed her wrists. Shit! <laughs> you! I threw myself upon Oda as soon as I could squeeze myself between the elevator door and grab them away from Shiro. Even though I was hardly a fighter, oh, I thought the punch was going to come, but I did stop it, so I was right on that front. Because, you know, it would have been so iconic for me to save Shiro the same way I saved Sasami, you know, some shit like that. Just that swift punch to the face. Anyways, even though I was hardly a fighter up against an old man, I was more than a match. Adrenaline surging in my body, I pinned the old man to the floor. Ah, you! Security staff rushed into the office through the emergency stairwell. They helped me hold the old man down as they threw handcuffs onto his wrists. You, what are you doing? Can you not see I am your boss? Not anymore, I'm afraid. What? Your takeover was a failure. Kamijo Sr.'s condition is stabilized in the hospital. His son's already downstairs right now arresting all your core conspir conspirators. And now that you've made your true intentions clear, the board of directors wants you to disappear. Wait, disappeared. Okay. I'm calling the ambulance for you right now. I want you to live after all. Considering what's going to happen to you from now, you'd be wishing you had died instead. <laughs> Security raised Oda up and shoved him out of the room. <sighs> she picked herself up. She shook her pain away and stared down at uh, Oda as he was escorted away. You... You're a villain, no better than me. You betrayed your one true love. You slept your way to the top. A fake idol is all you are. That may be true, but... Shiro bared her teeth in defiance. <laughs> At least I managed to protect one last person before it was too late. With that, the doors of the elevator closed shut on Oda's blood-soaked face. I rushed over to Sasami and wrapped the ropes around her wrist while putting my coat over her. Are you alright? Did that asshole touch you anywhere? If he did, I'm seriously gonna murder that Kamijo bastard for letting this happen! No, I'm alright. He never got his hands on me. After all, Shiro-san was here in the end. She risked her life to protect me. I faced Shiro who stood up opposite to me, a bloodstained flag staff in hand. She lowered her head. My apologies. Thanks to my carelessness, I put your talent in harm's way. For that, there's no punishment too greater to absolve me of what I've done. Instead, I stood up along with Sasume. <clears throat> no. In fact, I'm the one who's in your debt, Sirius. Um, seriously. I bowed down. Thank you for protecting Sasume when I couldn't be here. I'm in your debt. Tears ran down Shiro's face. Bowing before a false idol such as I. <laughs> Shiro's laughter broke down into tears. <laughs> Sasumi knelt down beside Shiro as she crumpled to her knees. Shiro, it's too late. No, it's not too late. I'm all right thanks to you. No, she is lost forever. Because of my arrogance, I killed her with these very hands. And nobody can ever replace what I lost to get here. This place, the highest peak of Golden Cap's office. Sasami. I heard her. I heard her. I heard the words she spoke to me that night. And when I did, there was no way I could let history repeat itself. But nothing will change the past. Nothing will change what happened that night. What I did. Shh. It's not over yet. We're both alive. We both made it out of this, didn't we? <laughs> what an embarrassment I've made of myself. Crying like this. But it was you who was in danger. Shouldn't you be the one crying right now? No, it was cool how Shiro came to the rescue right at the last second. <laughs> it kind of made me feel like the damsel in distress in a film or something. It's the adrenaline talking now, though. If you get any panic attacks or nausea once you calm down, you're gonna head to the hospital right away. Okay, but I'm alright, really. The strength of an Ilo truly cannot be underestimated. Yes. You too. 
Shiro looked out the window into the heavens above. There's a tale of the Christian Bible, in the Christian Bible. After escaping from the tyranny of the Pharaoh, Moses, the Savior, led the Israelites across the desert and to the distant mountains. The track long in Adris, the Israelites uh, began to question whether Christianity could save them from their hardships. And so they forged the first great idol of the world. What? A giant golden calf. <laughs> Perhaps that is all we are. A beautiful, shining idol to distract mankind from its sorrows. The three of us arrived downstairs where the security staff was busy taking Oda's co-conspirators away. Aga and her group of socio- uh... Psychopath- Psychopaths? Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, star stared at their feet. Their faces pale as Kamijo stood over them. You, all of you, you're all fired! <laughs> Don't ever show your face in this business ever again, or else you will regret ever having been born. Take them away! With that, the staff escorted the disgraced girls out of the room. The man himself turned to face me. Ah, producer son, there you are. Now that this affair has been resolved, I propose that we... Kamicho, you bastard! The girls gasped as I gave the dickhead a solid punch to the side of his girly face. Hard enough to send his glasses flying. I heard the glasses shatter when they impacted against the wall. Oh, the wall, damn. Okay, maybe I punched him a little harder than I thought I would, but that asshole deserved every bit of it. If he had arrived just five seconds later, I would have been one detained by security staff and the absolute worst possible ending would have come to pass. Despite being knocked hard enough to crook his neck sideways, Kamijo clenched his teeth but did not groan in pain. Very well. I will permit that one. <laughs> Kamijo said you get one. You get one. <laughs> He said you get one! <laughs> oh god! I've been waiting to do that, but I wasn't expecting it so like so like mm, damn. I will permit that one. I raised my fist like you only get one! <sighs> but only that one. Yeah. Like clockwork, an assistant appeared seemingly out of nowhere and gave Kamijo a new set. What the fuck? <laughs> In any matter, you have my thanks for helping thwart that man's takeover of the company. Huh, better to accept the lesser of two evils, no? At least I still have some standards. Mako appeared from behind Kamijo's back. And it certainly is a relief that Yoshino-san here managed to tip my supporters off as to what was happening as well. They are already working behind the scenes to ensure Oda and Nakita pay for what they have done. My girl Mako, doing the good deeds. Ah, my girl. <sighs> this doesn't absolve you of anything. All this still happened under your watch. Oh god, there is a hiccup brewing. Kamijo-san! Kari came running out of the change room, now dressed in her track uniform. She rushed over and wrapped her arms around him. Thank goodness you arrived on time! I was so scared, you know, I thought they'd really got their way with me. Oh, thank goodness they were all stopped in time. Kamijo <laughs> don't know what to do. Uh, Kamijo looked to be at complete loss. The girl cried into his chest. Finally, he looked away and awkwardly patted her on the back. You have my apologies. Uh, I will reevaluate our company culture to ensure such a thing does not repeat. Uh, uh, what am I doing? Kari jumped away, realizing she was embracing the executive producer, Quasar. I'm sorry. I was just so... I, I didn't mean... Uh, no. Sela also came out of the change room, her metal frame battered, and one of her antennas broken off. Kamijo san I apologize for my unsightly display. Luckily, my core systems do not seem to be too badly damaged. However, it appears I have caused Golden Calf a great amount of trouble, and the cost required to put me back into commission would doubtlessly be immeasurable. This android idol is truly ashamed by what unfolded. Before Stella could breathe another word, Kamijo barked at a staff member. You! Make sure Stella is repaired back to perfection, perfect condition! Spare not a single expense! And install some self-defense protocols in her while you're at it! 
Mijo-san. My apologies, Stella. But fear not, the company will do everything in its power to ensure you are made whole again. Uh, no, I am but an android idol. All of you who witnessed this sad tragedy. Remaining girls of Quasar who had joi not joined Haruka's posse of bullies gathered around him. I... I apologize with all my heart. This is the first time we've seen a sad Kamijo sprite. <laughs> As your executive producer, I will do everything in my power to ensure this tragedy never occurs again. On behalf of Golden Cat Productions, I ask for your forgiveness. With that, Kamijo bowed down before his girls, causing jaws to drop across the entire team. Never before had they ever bowed before he ever, Kamijo ever bowed before any of them. He had n been an unquestionable tyrant, the devil himself. <sighs> <clears throat> Seeing the awkward display before me cooled down the raging inferno in my chest by just a measure. At least it made me realize that this guy wasn't a complete monster. In the end, humans were complicated creatures, and running a massive corporation wasn't easy. Neither was succeeding a father's legacy. Sometimes you had to wear the suit of the devil so snugly to survive that you forgot that, uh, where the act ended and your humanity began. Maybe I had come to understand the enigma known as Kamijo Jr. just a little bit better tonight. Still, I really couldn't stand this guy at all. As expected, he would always be my rival. In any matter, now that Sasumi was safe, my role here was ending. Seeing how I owed Sasumi's life to Shiro, I couldn't hate Quasar or Golden Calf that much. From the look of things here, it seemed like they had suffered heavily da heavy damage because of Oda's attempt takeover of the company as well. All the girls were undoubtedly scarred by what happened. It would take much time for their wounds, for the wounds everyone sustained tonight to heal. I never seen Okuda Shiro so vulnerable. Just how much longer could she bear the burden of being the leader of these girls? All this time, the weight of preserving the greatness of Quasar had been on her shoulders. She had sacrificed everything so that Quasar would always be number one. The weight was heavy, but such was the cost of becoming a legend. Not only that, but Kamijo had just fired seven of Quasar's members. There was no way that they could announce the dismissal of seven members without public backlash. The tragic truth of the idol business was that the fans had no interest in the truth. The customers were here to be made happy, and facts, which they found disagreeable, ever came out. Then there would be, there were deemed the truth a lie. And whatever was the popular consensus, the truth. Like it or not, Quasar may have been mortally wounded tonight. In the end, only we were ever going to know the truth. And it was a bitter one. A black one. But, one that we had to live with. Behind every idle smile was a field of broken dreams, ruined expectations, and crushing humiliations. This secret world was kept hidden from the public's eye. Maybe as your favorite idol smiled on television, she was crying in shadows. Maybe she had no choice but to betray her friends to be the spotlight. Maybe she had swallowed the degra degradation of being taken advantage of by a powerful to move up the ladder. Maybe she had manipulated people, tricked them, did evil herself. No matter what, she had suffered. She had trained hard enough to make most of men weep. She had endured the, uh, the abuse of fans, executives, and teammates alike. All because she dreamed that she had what it took to one day grab that glorious destiny. Of not being yet another cog in the machine, but a star. A brilliant, shining star. Bright enough to turn night into day. It was a life I could never attain for myself. Long ago I had tried my best and I had failed. From that experience, I knew this was a harsh, ruthless world in which I could never survive. I was never meant to be the hero of this story. I, Karo Nishiyama, was but a witness. A witness to the tale of seven shining stars of Star Nova. Yamamoto Maria, above all, she survived ordeals which would have broken the strongest of us. Inducted into Quasar trainee program at the age of 14, she threw away her childhood to become part of something greater. But what she found was not the stardom she envisioned, but a ruthless wolf pack. She became the lowest ranked member after failing to accomplish anything, then was tossed out after she outgrew her use. But she still struggled to fulfill her dream until finally she arrived at the place she had always aimed, Tokyo Dome. 
Hashimoto Mika, the naive trouble girl who became an idol armed only with her love of Akiba culture. Her expectations were quickly dashed when the live action drama adaptation of her favorite manga was nothing but a quick cash grab. She became hated by the very fandom that kept her going through the darkest moments of her life. However, she kept smiling. She kept doing her best. Mika never lost hope. Kashiwaki Aki, the most complicated girl on the team, she was forced into adulthood by her mother, even before she was old enough to understand what was happening, all in the hope of a better life. She had, she never had a childhood or a real mother or a father, but she never once looked back and not once wished her life had turned out differently. She was proud of what she was to the core. With all her heart, she wanted to become the number one idol, not for money, fame, nor her self-satisfaction, but to finally gasp that which she had never had her entire life, her mother's love. Akimoto Nemo, a love child born from an affair between a wealthy businessman and an idol. Her mother went mad from being fired after becoming pregnant and abused Nemo throughout her childhood. She only grew up into a healthy woman thanks to the selflessness uh, the selfless intervention of the very wife whom her father had abandoned. Tanabe Natsuki. She came out to the city just a naive girl searching for her favorite idol. But as the going got tough, she abandoned her original mission and devoted herself to sharing the burden of her teammates on the path to stardom. Even when she found out her family's farm was about to be repossessed, she kept cheering everyone on. Finally, thanks to everyone's efforts, she became successful enough to not only save her family farm, but to become a star idol herself. Watanabe Julie, a wild rebellious girl living in a culture foreign to her. She got into a scandal after scandal thanks to her attitude. She received hate mail on a daily basis and was harassed by haters around the clock. But she kept going, whether out of desire for a quick wealth or a deep-seated love for her teammates. Julie kept smiling. And so she would continue until she drove off into the sunset in her Lambo, her golden hair fluttering in the wind, her middle finger outstretched to the haters. Shimazaki Sasumi, the center of Star Nova and perhaps the heroine of this beautiful, sorrowful, bleak, yet hopeful idol story. She began this as an innocent lamb, eager to believe in others and to do her very best every day. But it turned out the world was not so simple. She was tricked, she was corrupted, she fell into despair, but in the end, she was reborn, a brilliant star, my heroine, someone I was the proudest of, my love. And Okuda Shiro, the empress of the entertainment business. Behind her mysterious smile was a story of deep-seated, silent suffering. She wore the crown of Quasar with magnificent projecting, nothing that but perfection with each breath. But it was a heavy crown, a crown forged in the heart of Quasar, the densest, heaviest object in the universe. She had lost everything to wield it, but every loss had been projected as a win. Every tear was turned into laughter. All the time she was taken advantage of, she remade into her greatest triumphs. But within her, she knew to attain everything, she had to, she had lost everything. Where would her story go from now, having finally made that realization? Looking at her face now, the embers of optimism yet flickered in my chest. These girls had been stars of their story, of this story all along. I felt Sasumi wrap her arm around mine. Producer son, what's going to happen from now? Well, uh, let me actually speak, because uh, I, uh, that was a long one that I just went on, but still. Like, I had a feeling, deep in my heart, I was hoping that Shiro, you know, like, even though she said, like, it was kind of hinted at that, you know, Shiro did still care and shit like that, but I, I was still hoping that, you know, Shiro isn't actually a disgusting, horrible person. She cares, but this is just kind of the shit she has to do to stay on top, and it is. She saved my girl. Shiro has redeemed herself from being an asswipe to the fucking hero. Like, I I'm glad that Shiro finally came to the realization that she needed that, you know, maybe all that ain't worth it, because I'm losing everything in the process of getting all this other crap that, you know, kind of means nothing at this point, so I'm, I'm proud of Shiro. She, she really grew up throughout this whole thing. <laughs> I'm not going to give up. For as long as I can keep fighting, you and the others will be the faces of Star Nova. I told you, didn't I? I'd be the guy camped out for your events three days in advance, your number one fan. 
There's no way I'd ever pick someone else over you. Yes, producer son. Let's go home. Tells me and I looked out into the night. Yeah. Let's return back to where the others are at. Hmm. And so we left the Golden Cap building, starting over his biggest crisis behind us. We were far from secure. We still had a myriad of troubles swirling around us. But if we could overcome this, then I knew for certain that everything else would be easy in comparison. This is not the ending of the story of Star Nova and Quasar. Our decisive moment was still ahead of us. Yes, we would still meet at the Idol Grand Prix. But what as what? Enemies? Or... As we left, Sasumi turned her head and looked back on Shiro. Sasumi-chan. Shiro! The destinies now intertwined, history was about to be made. Is the Idol Grand Prix? I don't know, maybe. I think so, because it's August. I mean... I mean, we'll continue next time because we've been going for a hot minute. Uh, I was getting really into this because shit was getting wild. But yeah, so I don't know how much is left. But maybe because only the days passed after the incident. So my guess is we're at the pre now. I think. I don't know. So we'll see what happens because holy shit, everything's been going wild. But thank you all for watching. If you like this, hit the thumbs up button and save it to your favorites. Also, share it with your friend. Yeah, this is the Ido Grand Prix, but that still says 2017. Ah, thank you all for watching. If you like this, hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends, guys. Star Nova might be coming to an end next episode. I don't know, but it feels like it. So, you know, just let everybody know. If they've been waiting to watch this series from start to finish when it was all complete, tell them to start now because the next episode might be the last. So, thank you all for watching. This has been a crazy episode. Everything was going down. Everything was popping off and bam. Now now there's peace between Quasar and Star Nova? I don't know. But we'll see. So yeah. We're gonna hit this up in maybe the final episode or maybe there's two more. I don't know. But we'll see next time, guys. Thank you all for watching. We love you all and we'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye everyone.